Now, in the UK, millions of people tune into Good Morning Britain to watch Piers Morgan deliver the news, but you're just as likely to find him in the headlines. From his views on the royal drama to Australia's bushfire crisis, he's not afraid to speak out, and this morning, he is our special guest. And Piers Morgan joins me now from London. Piers, great to have you on Sunrise. Look, I used to think you had an axe to grind for, for Meghan Markle. I was team Mark. Meghan, I thought you were just a grumpy old man because she didn't want to be a friend. But I must admit, I'm starting to see where you're coming from. Have you noticed a lot of more people like me changing their view on her? I'm afraid I have, David, yes. I'm afraid that uh, you can't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> You know, I always believe in the phrase, if someone shows you who they are, then believe them. And the reason I keep repeating my experience with Meghan Markle is I genuinely found it quite shocking. You know, we were friends for about 18 months and then she came to London, we met up in my local pub, we had a great time, and she went on Twitter and said how great it was to catch up with friends in London and included me. Uh, and then that was the last I ever heard from her. She met Prince Harry and, like so many other people, bang. And then what happened was quite interesting. Through the engagement and the wedding, she got universal praise, including for me. I was like, you know, whatever's happened with my friendship with her, I think she's going to be good news for the royal family. But then around the time of the wedding, you may remember, with all the stuff around her dad, who she disowned, her family, none of whom came to the wedding, then all these stories about what she did to her ex-husband, that she effectively fired him by sending him through the mail, his rings, uh, and then loads of other people saying, well, she, she ghosted me, she dumped me, she ditched me. And it really cemented in me a feeling that Meghan Markle is not quite what she seems, that she's actually somebody who I think is a pretty ruthless social climber who has spent her life uh, using people and moving on and ditching them. And it's an unpleasant trait. What makes it more serious now is that having basically got rid of her own family, she now appears to be trying to get rid of Harry from his family. And I think that is a dangerous moment for the royal family and for the monarchy. Yeah. And, look, we, we can compare it to Yoko Ono, sort of breaking up the Fab Four. Um, but, but some of the blame has got to be with Harry, doesn't it, as well? Yeah, completely. Listen, Harry's not blameless. The difference is that when you criticise Meghan, you get accused of being racist, even if you're not remotely racist, like me. Uh, and if you criticise Harry, no one says, well, you're being gingerous because he has ginger hair. Um, yeah. But there's a difference in the way that criticism of the two is treated. And the, my issue with Harry is he's so weak over all this. I quite predicted and understand why Meghan Markle finds royal duty stifling and boring and wants to be a global Hollywood superstar, but Harry was born into this and he should know better than most people that in return for all the servants and the palaces and the right. luxury life, that actually you have to perform what's called duty. That is what the royal family do. That's why they exist. They perform public duty. And it seems to me what these two now want is they want all their cake and all the royal trimmings, but they don't want to have to work for it in the way that other okay. royals do. So, that so, is not acceptable. So you're saying make the decision. Cut and dry. Don't try and have your cake and eat it. A lot of young Brits are saying, well, why shouldn't they lead their own life? Quite rightly, you're saying, OK, if you're going to do that, don't leverage your position and your title with the royal family. Yeah, I mean, Meghan Markle was completely unknown before she met Harry in Britain, for example, and probably Australia. Unless you watched Suits, her show in America, you had no idea who she was when she came to my local pub. Nobody recognised her. Uh, now she's one of the most recognisable people in the world purely because she married into our royal family. If she now leaves and goes around the world making millions and tens of millions of dollars out of that royal connection, that will leave a pretty unpleasant taste in the mouth. Young people get very influenced uh, uh, these days by Twitter. It's a very liberal, skewed, uh, youthful, woke, progressive platform. Uh, but Twitter's always wrong about everything. Never thought I'd hear Piers Morgan use the word woke. But anyhow, let's move on. You've, you've also had our, <laughs> had our Prime Minister in your sights over the bushfire crisis. You recently made headlines here after a really fiery debate uh, on your show with one of our senior MPs. What's your message to Scott Morrison about the bushfires? 
Well, my first message was, what the hell were you thinking going on holiday to Hawaii as your country is engulfed in flames? Uh, my second message is, get real about climate change. You know, I'm not saying that climate change was the only reason for these fires. Australia's had fires for centuries. But there's absolutely no doubt, when you listen to all the firefighters involved and all the scientists and the experts, that the scale and ferocity of these fires that Australia is now seeing uh, is directly and inarguably linked to the heating up of the planet. It's making it a lot worse. So Scott Morrison and Mr Kelly and the others need to wake up and recognise the reality. OK, can he survive this? Can he rebuild his stocks? He's plunged in, in the opinion polls. I would be very surprised if he ends up surviving this, for, for one reason. The point of leaders is you have to lead in times of crisis. Anyone can do it when things are going well. Anyone can be prime minister or president when everything's hunky-dory. But when you're facing one of the most calamitous disasters in the history of modern Australia and your reaction is to go and lie on a beach yeah. and then your reaction is to completely deny any link with the bleeding obvious as to why this may be so bad, I think you make your own position untenable. I've seen the reaction of Australian people as Scott Morrison has been going around on his travels trying to belatedly be a leader. They're having none of it, and I don't blame them. The British Prime Minister had behaved like he had done in a situation like this, he'd be gone. But a lot of Australians would be are saying, what gives you the right to comment on our Prime Minister when you've got this clown Boris Johnson in the top job in Britain who, who brought on Brexit, uh, the Brexit vote, then resigned and said, oh, don't leave it up to me to, to push it through, then all of a sudden comes back on a, as a knight in shining armour. Well, I don't think Boris Johnson is a clown. He's a very smart guy and he won a thumping majority in the election. And although I didn't personally vote for Brexit and don't really agree with Brexit, uh, he certainly did agree with it and did campaign for it and has now delivered on his promise to actually get Brexit done. You know, the Parliament voted last week to proceed with Brexit. So, you know, I give Boris Johnson credit for showing leadership in direct contrast to Scott Morrison. And when it comes to talking about each other's countries, let's be honest, you guys <laughs> wouldn't have a show without us Brits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. Well, one of your other other <laughs> colleagues said uh, um, Australia wasn't fit to be inhabited last week, which uh, got under our skin a little bit. Um, <laughs> well, I, listen, I love Australia. No, notwithstanding, notwithstanding, notwithstanding the fact that the last time I was in Australia, Brett Lee spread eagled my ribs in a net at Melbourne and yep. did a test match, which I think was a fairly notorious uh, blimp in cricket history in Australia. <laughs> I love Australia, love Australian people, <laughs> and I feel we're very connected, yep. despite the fact you're obviously all... Uh, from our convicts. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. That is getting so old now. Look, we love talking to you. You're a bit <laughs> of a polarising fit. Not a bit. A big polarising figure in the UK. Has there been a moment where you think you've ever gone too far? You know, there was a moment a few months ago when I thought I was wrong about something, but it turned out I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with Piers Morgan, with that, we'll leave it there. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, guys. <laughs>